Governor Greg Abbott's level of involvement in the search for a new CEO for ERCOT and the nonprofit's public communications have surprised a number of sources. That's according to the Texas Tribune. Joining us this morning to talk more about it is Mitchell Furman, energy and economy reporter with the Texas Tribune. Good morning, Mitchell. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. So tell us a little bit more about the story. Brad Jones was tapped as interim CEO, supposed to step down in June. That hasn't happened. What's really the holdup here? Yeah, the sources in the power industry say the holdup largely is Governor Abbott. Uh, he has final say here, even though he's not formally involved in the in the ERCOT search process. That job is is largely uh, decided by by the board of directors of ERCOT and a search firm that they've contracted with. But the governor has final say here, uh, uh, and, and he is. You know, candidates are being brought to him for approval or disapproval. And according to people in the power industry who are familiar with the process, uh, the governor has a bill, has full veto power, and he has already he has already used that. Yeah, and and so Mitchell, tell us a little bit more. I, I was reading in your story that there was actually someone who had some pretty strong qualifications for this position. Um, they were from California. Do you have any insight on what happened there? The the candidate is uh, he's actually a Texan uh, or, and he was vice president of TXU Energy, which is a, a prominent en energy company based in, in Irving in North Texas. And then he, he later went on to become CEO of California's power grid operator, basically the equivalent of ERCOT. And uh, and that candidate appeared to have have support from people in the power industry and from ERCOT's board of directors. But uh, according to people familiar with the process, the governor rejected the candidate. Um, and and one one prominent person in the power industry said that the only explanation that they got for the rejection was because the candidate came from California. And, you know, the you know, California has had its share of, of problems, the source said, but that you cannot argue with the candidate's qualifications. Mitchell, we're talking about ERCOT that has undoubtedly had some really big issues in the state. Reading one of the quotes from your piece, uh, it says the governor is not just reviewing and editing ERCOT's public statements. He's telling ERCOT whether or not they can release grid information at all. What is the governor saying about this and what does this all really mean? The governor did not address this directly when I asked his office uh, you know, I sent a, a bunch of detailed questions over and, and they, they responded, but not uh, they did not answer uh, many of the questions directly. Um, you know, and and the the issue here that uh, the a former senior ERCOT employee said is that it means the governor, the governor controlling the public communications means that information is potentially not getting where it needs to go. And that means uh, Texans are not hearing what they what, what they need to hear about the grid. And at, at, at times since the winter freeze, the, the governor's office, according to this source, has examined press releases and other public communications that ERCOT had prepared to put out to the public um, and made changes if they were uncomfortable with the language, which is extremely unusual. Uh, before Winter Storm Uri, uh, it was normal for ERCOT to uh, to run public communications by the agency, the state agency that oversees them, the Public Utility Commission of Texas. The governor appoints the board of the Public Utility Commission of Texas, and the governor's office used to be briefed as well uh, before ERCOT would, would say things publicly. But it was usually just a heads up, and, and ERCOT was rarely, rarely questioned or told what to do. Uh, but now uh, that has flipped, and, and the governor's office seems to be uh, dictating communications and and really kind of grabbing control of that. Yeah, well, dictating. Um, pretty strong accusations there. I know here at Fox 7, our journalists have also made attempts to get interviews, and we've also been told no. Well, we look forward to some more of your reporting and to see what this all means next. We appreciate your time. Mitchell Furman with the Texas Tribune. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you.